Good evening, welcome to the December 5th Board of Selectmen's meeting. This meeting is being recorded for cablecast and YouTube presentation by Area 58 Community Access Media. The video of this meeting is not to be considered an official public record. Okay, our first thing on the agenda is Mike Mattern, who would like to talk about the Maple Street zoning permit process. And <coughs> You can stay sitting. Stand? No, you may stay okay. sitting. Um, and just, Mike, with the understanding that what you're about to talk about is probably really a, a zoning enforcement officer or a ZBA issue, it's not? I don't think so. All right, go ahead. And okay. Michael Matter, 113 Maple Street. I am not going to talk about the determination of the zoning officer. That's a different issue. I pointed out that ZBA. Um, the issue is that I sent a letter to building department, uh, and actually I should say I sent it, actually a bunch of us uh, in the street, about mm -hmm. 10 or so people, uh, citing the fact that there is a, build, a zoning permit that was issued and uh, applied for and denied in 2014 for the property next door, Maple 636. That permit was denied on uh, Ju uh, June 2nd of 2014. The reconsideration letter by the applicants and their attorney was sent to us in February of 2016, nearly two years later, 20 months or so, roughly. Um, and it asked Mr. Carling to reconsider his determination. I'm not gonna get into the determination itself, but he did that based on talking with the uh, town council and whoever else, he decided that uh, he would reverse his decision about the applicability of the particular provision that he had denied it for. And he came up with an email that he sent to Tom Milius saying basically that, that, he, that, that provision, that requirement uh, in the zoning bylaw does not apply to a single family use, is what he says. That's all it says. And that was in uh, March 14th of the 2016, mm -hmm. almost two years later. All I'm saying is that he has shown his intention to change, to, to, to accept the permit or allow the permit rather than deny it because he's dropping the, the provision that he had denied it for originally. But that's not a permit. The original permit was denied two years before, would have expired even if it had been granted long before that. And at this point, my contention is, is that I'm coming to you, the selectman, because the zoning enforcement officer works under your authority and your supervision. And in this case, it's a process procedural issue that I'm talking about right now, not the determination in which zoning bylaws apply or not or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that he is not following the proper process, which is to apply for a permit, that's what it says right on the form, uh, application and at the bottom he's supposed to sign it and accept it or deny it and put in whatever notes he wants there's a fee involved now because we denied it the first time and maybe we shouldn't have if we had seen it determ determination differently maybe we don't require them to pay a new fee we waive that but they still should have to apply for a new permit so that he can accept it so we have the paper trail of a permit this one has a number on it, 1411 on a certain date but it's denied. It's not even been modified. This is right out of the public records. My p contention is, is that as the selectman and his procedure should have been to make, have them make a new permit so that he can accept it, and then that gives the public a date mm -hmm. by which we have 30 days to apply for an appeal if we want to. We didn't get that. I have no access to his email or Mr. Milius, who he sent it to. I got this months later when I found out there even was one. We were waiting for a permit. There never was one. Finally, I asked, where is the permit? Oh, well, this is it. No, it's not. It says he's willing to grant one. Yes. And the reconsideration letter is not a permit either. That's a request by the other attorney, the applicant's attorney, for us to look at it. That's not a permit either. So but that's all I'm saying. He, okay. He, he got Thank you. Procedure. Attorney Quirk, I think that you worked with Bob Carlin in this. Would you? Sorry, Alana. Oh, I can open something. 
contorted a little bit. Uh, Atlanta Court, KP Law, Town Council. Yes, I did work with the, um, the, you, you can't hear? You can't hear? There's an echo. Okay. How about that? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. And perhaps they'll tell me if it's not being picked up. Okay. So I did. I did work with the um, with the zoning enforcement officer, with the zoning officer, with respect to this matter. My understanding is that the recitation of the facts, as just provided by Mr. Madden, are es essentially correct. That there was a determination, a denial in June of 2014, and then over a long period of time, ultimately there was a reconsideration of that, and a writing did go out with regard to that determination. And certainly under 40A, Section 7, Section 8, Section 11, <coughs> Section 14, there is an ability to appeal any determination of the zoning officer that someone disagrees with. Uh, there is case law on it, uh, the Galvan case and the, um, um, the Connors versus Anino case, which say that, you know, in the event that an abutter has knowledge of the determination, then that triggers the 30-day the appeal period. And there is no obligation under the statute uh, for notice to go out of a building permit or of a zoning permit or of a reconsideration. Uh, you know, with respect to a building permit, normally, oftentimes, the first notice that anyone has that a building permit has been issued is when the building starts. And so, <clears throat> In the event that that's the first time when someone hears about it, then they would have a further opportunity to appeal. So obviously this will go before the ZBA. I understand that, um, that there has been an appeal filed. The ZBA will look at all the different elements of, of what's being talked about. With respect to the procedure, I think that the zoning officer was clear. He denied a permit and then he reconsidered and he gave written notice to the building inspector of that reconsideration, which is the important thing to do. The way that you have your process set up is so that the zoning officer makes a zoning determination and then gives that zoning determination essentially to the building inspector. As you may be aware, under the state building code, there is a specific incorporation into the state building code of your zoning bylaw provisions. And so the building inspector, before giving a building permit, needs to know that there is compliance with zoning. And so the way that you have done the zoning determination is to set up this zoning permit process. And so again, there was a, an initial determination in the permit denied, and then there was a reconsideration sometime later, um, saying no, you know that was incorrect, and and notice was given to the building inspector, and I believe also to the party who requested the permit. And as I mentioned, there is no requirement to give notice to abutters uh, with respect to either the issuance of a building permit or of a zoning determination. Sometimes it happens, and as Mr. Mattern indicated, uh, they learned of it you know, some time ago, back in February, I think he said, of 2016, which is important to note. So I think that the procedure is one that's appropriate for the town to use, and I think it was followed appropriately. So the length of time between the denial of the permit and the letter of reconsideration doesn't matter? No, I think, like a I, think year that, plus. I think that what happened was that uh, there was a, a long going back and forth between the parties and then eventually uh, this board said, look, let's have council get involved and, and look at the issues. And once that happened, that's when reconsideration occurred. So any permit then that's denied can be reconsidered at, at any, any time. time? Yes, yes. It can, uh, and you know certainly in the event that it's you know reconsidered and denied, uh, the reconsideration is denied. You know there would be an argument that you can't appeal the reconsideration because you need to appeal the the original denial. But here, um, here there was a reconsideration. It did happen, and it was issued in writing. Uh, it went to the building inspector and it went to the applicant, and that's what's required to happen. First of all, there is no provision in our bylaws, or actually really, there's mention of reconsideration on one state master in the law. It says reconsideration in the paragraph, but it doesn't actually ever say anything in the paragraph about a reconsideration. There is nothing in our bylaws about reconsideration at all. 
Secondly, there was nothing in the public record file, regardless of when it got there, that said there's a permit. That email is not a permit. It doesn't say it's a permit. It says it's a communication between two parties of our, of our town. It doesn't say anything about being a permit. The fact that I knew or that we learned of the reconsideration letter sometime in March or whenever it was, some back there, we knew that, you were, that it was being considered. But we were expecting a permit would be generated from that, and we've been waiting for that and asking about it, and nobody ever came up with it. And now all of a sudden, this is a permit? No, it's not a permit. You give us a date, because otherwise we can't, you are illegally denying us our right to appeal. And that- We, we only and, have and, 30 days. And, and without a, without Chair, a that would that would be a determination well, for the, <laughs> wait a minute. the CBA to make. Excuse me. Without a permit in the file, I can't find it. If I can't find it, then I can't exercise my 30-day appeal, can I? Madam Chair, through you, mm -hmm. uh, that is a determination for the ZBA to make with respect to the appeal that's been filed as to whether there was 30 days notice of, of the action taken by the zoning officer. Okay. Say, say that again. So now that he's appealed to the Board of Appeals, <coughs> they can decide if, he, if his, time he's appealed within the time frame or Correct. not. Correct. Correct. That's up to the Board of Appeal. Correct. And what if they say it was too late? That's up to the Board of Appeals well, based upon all the facts. That's what he's talking about. We, well, but we that's, should have been notified. That's, we appealed no, there's based no, on the letter from Bob Carley because there. that's the first time we were told that that was, that that was being considered a permit. And, and the issue will be who knew what and when they knew it, mm -hmm. uh, whether there was notice uh, and that 30 days went by after there was notice, realization by a party who feels aggrieved, who wants to appeal whether they knew about the the reconsideration or not because the reconsideration was a zoning determination and under chapter 48 section 7 and section 8 11 and 14 uh, there is a requirement within 30 days to appeal from any order or determination that you're aggrieved by within 30 days well who makes the decision around when that 30 day starts how do they know that 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 is something that will be before the ZBA when they yeah but even if it was something else coming up well let's say it's a building permit let's say a building permit issues and there's no notice to anyone except the party who requested the building permit then it becomes an issue of whether if there's an abutter who's a, who feels aggrieved by it when did they know about it it becomes a question of fact as to whether they whether they whether and when they knew about it. Well, the first time they would know is when they saw the zoning agent's letter. Well, that would be up to the ZBA to decide as to, because there are a number of people who have appealed, and perhaps each of them had a different state of knowledge. Uh, you know, Mr. Mattern indicated tonight that he had knowledge in February of 2016, but there are a number of people who have appealed, and it's not clear what all, what each of them, what the state of knowledge was and when for each of them. And that's something that the ZBA will need to inquire about. Mr. Henry? The, the only um, notice or request for reconsideration that I've seen is a request for consideration of a building permit denial. Now, is that the same thing? No, we're talking about a zoning determination. Yeah, see, the, the appeal that came up in February is, uh, not the appeal, the letter for requesting reconsideration is for to is to Milius, and it's requesting him to consider the denial of a building permit. And now, if there someplace is a request to reconsider the denial of the zoning permit, we have not been able to get it through uh, FOIA requests. I'm not sure I understand, John. The, the, the letter that, what's that attorney's name? Have you, uh, you, Brasco, I don't have it with me now. Adam Costa. Hip, hip, what he, when he threatened, you know, going after us for any number of things, <coughs> that was a request for reconsideration of a building permit denial. No, no. Well, it, it was, it, 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 I believe. It's, it's addressed I, to Milius. It is not addressed to Carlin. I believe that what happened is that Milius denied the um, Mr. Milius denied the building permit based upon a zoning, the zoning determination that uh, that the driveway was not wide enough, and so then ultimately there was a a, a set of discussions and ultimately the zoning officer reconsidered his determination in writing, gave it to Milius, 
And that's what we're talking about, that writing, that reconsideration. But there, there's not on record that we can find a request to reconsider the zoning denial. It's strictly, it talks about Milius denying the billing permit. Now maybe he denied it based on Carling, that's, that's okay. But Carling's denial has, unless it's someplace floating around in Carling's email, we have not seen that, and we've asked for it. But there is a reconsideration writing. Request to for uh, Milius to reconsider denial of building permit. No, I, I believe that there's a reconsideration by the zoning officer saying, I reconsider my decision in five No, he, he did it. Right. But there's no written request for him to do that. The request was made to Milius to reconsider the denial of the building permit. I'm not sure. Of, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Well, that's that's know. all we have is that. Okay. But I there is a writing. There is a, a letter that's uh, uh, there is a writing that says I reconsider. On this, well, there's know, a new, there's a new determination. The email, he reconsidered and somebody jerked around and got it on the town email somehow. But it, I mean that's that's kind of the issue here. We're dealing with private emails. And we've got all this stuff going on, and Bob Carling is aware of the fact that these people are very, very interested. Because he's 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 not looking at everything that he needs to look at. And that's all he's saying to the selectman is no, you don't want to interfere with his decisions, but you gotta make sure he's following the process and he's not. I went I went to the building department to ask for a copy of the all zoning permits with regard to that property. Mm -hmm. I was given those two pieces of paper. The original denied zoning permit and the copy, I have it right here if you want to see it, it's, it's got two little emails on it, one between Carling and, and Milius, and the bottom one is from Milius to Alana, I believe, if I recall, uh, saying that he's willing, that he's reconsidered and he wouldn't apply it, but it doesn't say anything about being a permit, neither one of them do actually, and the thing is, is that that's all I could get. Mm -hmm. And, and then uh, I spent about a week writing up the thing that we all signed, and we brought it to him on, uh, I think it was uh, 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 Halloween, actually. And uh, about a week and a half or so later, we got a letter basically saying, forget it, you know, that that, that was his determination, and that was it. And that was his determination. Mm -hmm. So that's a legal... Oh, well, that's, that's his order. Be that's his order, yes. And it, and it would have been appealable within 30 days, that oh. determination. So, I mean, he does have a point. How... how if, if there's no legal responsibility for the zoning officer or anybody to, to let the abutters know, uh, how do they <coughs> how do they appeal? When they find out about it. But if that's 60 days later, <laughs> or if, if it's already it? being yeah. built, yeah. I mean, you know, and it uh, it it puts everyone perhaps in a, a difficult spot. The, um, the the case law that we have really creates a situation of when did, what did you know and when did you know it, um, which is not necessarily. You know the easiest path to go down but that is essentially where we're at with that because there is no obligation to give notice to interested parties of either building permits or zoning permits or zoning determinations. So if it's 60 days later does the 30 days automatically cut off all conversation or can that be overruled? The 30 days? The 30 days is the 30 days. That's where the, the jurisdiction is to you know to entertain an appeal. Doesn't make sense. That's the law, Chapter 48, Section Section uh, 7. So but you also say when you find out about it. Yes. So there is, I'm I sorry, mean, if you found out about it after the 30 days, it's 30 days from when you find out about it, isn't it? I mean, the, the, court, it the, court hasn't, the courts haven't been entirely clear as to whether you get a whole new 30 days. I think that what you would need to do is you would need to move quickly to the ZBA. Mm -hmm. well, it's and in front of the ZBA now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you explain to me? why the dominoes keep falling. It started out in conservation. They said the fire chief demanded a 14-foot right-of-way. Demanded it. All of a sudden, it started changing. Now, he wants 12 feet. Well, he'll put sprinklers or something. Now, he's got 10 feet with a slope. 10 foot to get those emergency vehicles down there. We're going to allow this, okay? There, there goes the fire chief. I don't know who got to him, talked to him, said what. Now it goes to the building inspector. Dead against it, I hear. 
Now he falls. Now it goes to the zoning guy. Now he falls. That's just the way I see it. And that's what's going on. I don't think a building permit has been issued for no, this. No, it hasn't. It hasn't. It has no. but, but he has made to my note. No, I don't believe one made has. suggestions that he'd sign the thing once it gets down the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I watched that fire over in Pembroke uh, on 105 on oh, one yeah. Fox News, oh, Halifax. Oh. You know the guy's name says John Pep. John Pep, and he's got a drive down there, clear, right open. And you, you go by his house, you've seen it a million times. The Halifax fire chief would not go down there with his equipment and kept it out on the road and made a point to say it wasn't safe to go down there and he would pull water from the road from the trucks. Mm -hmm. Now you can go back to Fox News and check that around that time. Now, why is it unsafe over there, but it's safe here with his people that are disabled and handicapped down back in a corner of a swamp, 500 foot driveway that, I mean, how wide are those EMT vehicles? They get 10 feet to drive down now, with two feet going like this off each side that's just gonna degrade. But he agrees to it now. So I don't know what's going on, but it doesn't smell good to me. And that's all I'm gonna say. Another Thank you. point that I would like to make is that uh, the applicants, when they got their denial, had, had the right to appeal. That's the normal appeal process. That's part of the reason this whole uh, now, uh, letting you know. The applicant finds out because he gets his denial. So he has his 30 days, right, when, whenever that's issued. But nobody else apparently gets that right. The, the citizens and the, uh, the voters don't get that right because we're not required to be notified. Mm -hmm. But they had their right. They knew when it was, appeal, when it was denied. They never went to ZBA. Why? They waited a year and a half and then come back with a reconsideration letter and they didn't even take their legal right to, to appeal it. They should have done that then. Why did they wait a year and a half? So this seems to me that it's really getting into the appeal process and, and I don't want to taint that no, at I, all. I, so, um, I'm just pointing out they didn't exercise yes, their right yeah. either. And, and it does seem to me that, that we should somehow notify about ours. And is this something that we can change in our own bylaws? You can. So we are actually going to be considering these and perhaps you would be good enough to bring it to that committee, committee that's going to be doing the okay. zoning bylaws because, you know, you can't change things until you know they need to be changed. Thank so, um, so thank you for coming and... Okay, thank you for When is the hearing? I have a We're meeting tomorrow night to schedule okay. three weeks of advertising Hopefully the first week the beginning. Okay, excellent. Okay. Well, unless you want it on no, I know, think Christmas Eve. I can skip that. Yeah. So first week of January, I'll let you know after tomorrow. Okay. Tonight. Perfect. Just one further question. I'm assuming that Mr. Matter and the neighbors can uh, request reconsideration to that. And, they, and it'll be reconsidered again. Of the zoning determination? Yeah. You can, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. reconsideration can be requested at any time. Is there any restrictions or time limits or anything? Well, you know, in terms of the appeal, I mean, if the result is going to be exactly the same, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately that becomes a problem if it becomes repetitive. You know, bringing your, you know, a repetitive petition right. to the right. appeal board would be. But he, an he doesn't issue. know if the CBA is going to hear it or not. So they've got to determine if it was a timely appeal and stuff like that. Well, they're going to hear it to make that determination. There'll be a public okay. hearing. It'll but public what hearing. the hearing will be, was it properly filed or not? It could and be. It, and it could end right there. They could say, no. I mean, they got this request to reconsider it's, the building. It's, it's, it's possible, but the other point that I want to make, Madam Chair, through mm -hmm. you, and not giving any legal advice to anyone other than the town, of course, is that when when there is a motion for reconsideration in the event that it's denied, then if the original relief, if the time to to appeal has lapsed, you can't, you, you would not have a timely appeal based upon the reconsideration. And in mm -hmm. the case of, of Maple Street, the point was made that 
there was a denial of the permit and not an appeal to the um, to the ZBA, and that's true. Uh, when they came back, the assertion was under the Federal Fair Housing Act. It was not under zoning. I'm sorry. Could you so, clarify that? Yeah. When they came back and sought and sought reconsideration, the um, the assertion then by the developer's side was that um, the application and of the zoning bylaw and the um, the potential denial of the of the building permit was a violation of the Federal Fair Housing Act, which does not have the same deadlines that you would have under zoning. Hmm. So they're different. In other words, in other words, there are different causes of action. One would be an appeal to the ZBA because of a determination that there was a, a zoning issue that's properly before the mm -hmm. ZBA. The other is completely different. Um, it's a completely different claim. Hmm. Shouldn't they, that's a good point. So shouldn't they be separate? Shouldn't I mean the the zoning yeah. officer, the ZBA, yeah. Yeah. the CONCOM should not be worried about fair housing standard complaint. They should be worried about wetlands, zoning, whatever. It's, it's the it's the application of the bylaws that can give rise to a Federal Fair Housing Act complaint. So yes, they should be concerned about the Federal Fair Housing Act. Yeah, but maybe the Slackman should. No, the, the individual boards need to be concerned. Yeah, but they, well. the CONCOM can't be threatened by an action to do with fair housing standard. They got, have got to be able to look at their specific area of expertise and rule. They can't have counsel telling them, oh, but you've got to worry about this the federal they Fair can't do their job. The Federal Fair Housing Act does relate mm -hmm. to the application and how um, uh, zoning bylaws are applied. It does. Yeah. So it overrides a local It needs zone. to be considered. So it, would Mike, if he wants to, this to be reconsidered, does he send a letter to the zoning officer? He can if he wishes. Well, at the moment I have an appeal him. open, so I guess I wait for that first, I think. If, the, that. if the appeal goes against him, can he still file for reconsideration? He can file for reconsideration, but then there is no new appeal period under zoning that would attach. So in other words, the, the appeal period is the appeal period. You can always move for reconsideration later, though, if you wish. If the, and if there are no new facts, presumably the result is going to be exactly the same. So can, can then he go to court? You know, I, I really can't give legal advice to private parties. You, you know, certainly I can okay. say to you... The, Re the Reconsideration Act actually asked us to reconsider whether or not the provision in our bylaw actually applied to a single-family house because of the section that it's in. It's in Section 5, and the header of Section 5 has a weird, funky writing in there that excludes single-family residences from a whole bunch of different things in that section. And the driveway width happens to be buried in the middle of that. It doesn't belong there. I don't know why we put it there, but we did. Okay? But th then they went on in their, in their consideration. They, they even cited, well, if you think it really doesn't apply, then maybe, you know, and they go through this whole thing about whether that per paragraph applies to that, that a driveway width provision or not. Because it is a separate numbered provision, but it's in the, the bigger section. And they go through this whole section in the, in the reconsideration letter about that. Then they go on to the Fair Housing Act that they feel that, that it's a violation of that and whatever. But those bylaws are approved by the Attorney General. And we don't get them in there until they're approved. So that's, that has to have some weight in, in whether or not we are, as long as we have not discriminated against them and we're applying our bylaws as fairly to them as anybody else, that's not discrimination. We shouldn't be afraid of it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks right. for staying. And you're going See down you. to going planning now. Okay. All right. Next thing on the agenda is the rural school aid proposal. We got an email from school superintendent Joy Blackwood. Um, there is a rural school um, group who is applying um, to the legislature for aid for rural schools. Um, the good night, good night, thank you. Anna, thank you. The um, Silver Lake Regional School District <coughs> School Committee um, supported, signed, and supported a letter of. Um, support in this resolution and I guess I'd like to know if we would like to write a similar similar letter in support 
there's a possibility of us getting five hundred dollars per student and I see no reason why we wouldn't do it right have the other towns Kingston and Halifax do we know if they're doing it? we have no idea I have no idea uh, Charlie just I emailed this to him when we were having our, our meeting and um, he said that they were going to take a look at it too yeah. but he thought that it I didn't good. see anything in the proposal that would suggest we wouldn't want to do it right so. right so when Bree is back we'll have her um, basically copy this resolution and then we'll sign it as a board does that sound I'll make a motion that we do just what you say. Okay, I'll second. It. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. All right, the Elizabeth Dennett Trust gift to the Plimpton Historical Society. Um, it was for funds for the upkeep of the building. Mm -hmm. And who administrates that account? It, um, it was being administrated by um, Chris Morano, who has um, resigned and is no longer um, or will no longer be our Council on Aging agent. Um, there are two accounts. They were, I believe, set up for similar amounts. One of them has $25,000 left in it. And I believe, um, to give a little history, uh, Elizabeth Dennett donated $77,000 to the Plimpton Historic Society for the upkeep of the building. And the Historical Society split up the monies into two accounts and basically was using the funding out of, um, or the monies out of one account and wanted to, um, to let uh, the other half of it accrue some interest and, um, and build. So uh, one account has a balance of $25,878 and change, and the second account has a balance of $10,000, $351 and change. And, um, the uh, they're looking for some direction on how to manage these monies. Uh, I did reach out to Jessica Kinsman, I believe she's the yeah. new president of the um, Historical Society, to find out um, to tell her that we had just become aware of this and and to see if um, their board wanted to uh, maintain the. Um, the building and um, using these funds, and uh, I believe they can use CPC funds as well, um, can be used for that for mm -hmm. to apply for those. Or um, if th her, it was their intention that they um, were going to turn over the maintenance of the building to um, either the town or um, you know a town board because the town does own the building. So I have not heard back from Jessica. Well, um, the contract with the town. Uh, between the historical society and the town says that they They're the historical uh, okay. are responsible. Yeah. I'm also not aware that there is a board okay. other than Jessica. So there's just and a I president, think, huh? Yeah. I think that's one of the issues that needs to be addressed. And I think we probably should invite her in and I just did. talk through. Yeah. Okay. We'll try her again. I'll um, actually give her a call and see if we can get her on the next agenda. So, you know, either the contract would need to change or um, they need a board. To get money really? involved? Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea of the timing of the contract when it expires or anything, or is it? I think it. I have a copy, so I'll, let me send it. Okay. Around. Okay. I think it automatically renews for a dollar. I think that's the agreement, but don't quote me on that. I'll send you the okay. copies, and then we'll take a okay. look. Okay. All right. So we'll leave that have on you, the agenda. Do you want to? <laughs> no, I. I'll believe he's here with Bree. Yeah. Okay. I was made aware of that by okay. Christine, uh, Chris Moreno. Yeah. So we'll leave her on the agenda, or we'll leave this on the agenda for the 19th. Perfect. Um, unless you get a response that she's not coming in, then we'll okay. Sounds good. Deal with that. All right. Um, possible ways to combine services. You wanted to speak about the animal control officer position, and you also went to the OCPC meeting, Old Colony Planning. Well, actually, I missed it because my negotiations miss meeting went long with um, uh, Silver Lake. But um, they are more than happy, the OCPC, to assist us in looking at um, shared services. I guess that they had taken a preliminary look in the the spring, they said, and um, I'm not sure what happened, but um, they said nobody was really expressed any interest, but now we do have some interest and we have um, a focus and uh, 
some things that we'd like them to look at. So they are more than happy to give us a hand with and this. And you're going to continue following up on that? I'll continue to follow up with that. Okay. Um, we did get a <coughs> estimate from um, Noreen? Doreen. Doreen. Mm -hmm. With um, Halifax as to what it would cost if we were to combine the um, animal control with them and Frank has given us um, some figures too so I just received this from Frank so can we can I take a look at this and yeah. maybe hold it for Put next it on time, next time. Yeah. perfect okay legal services um, or maybe just yeah. probably we should talk about fire under this too because sure. that was one of the okay, things. Go ahead. Just to say that uh, there is a meeting set up on uh, the 14th Wednesday morning in Halifax at uh, 9 o'clock with uh, Kim Roy representing the selectmen, the chief, uh, Halifax chief, our chief, and myself. And we'll just delve into the numbers again. Okay. Try to get a little more clarity and understanding. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, in case you missed the scintillating meeting at, on the television, um, last Tuesday we met with the Halifax Board of Selectmen and the two fire chiefs um, trying to look at ways that maybe we can combine services, save the town some money, but maintain the same level of service. Um, so this is what John is pursuing with as he said, um, Halifax Luckman, Kim Roy, and the two fire chiefs. And there's several options that we're looking at, and uh, you know we want to try to figure out which yeah. one is um, in the best interest of um, of Plimpton. And uh, John is working to kind of get the numbers squared away, so we have a, a better idea of um, of what our position is now and um, and what it looks like going forward. Okay. And if you watch that, if you have the opportunity to watch that meeting. Um, we are considering other areas that maybe we can combine or share services. So that will be an ongoing conversation. Okay, the legal services. <coughs> Excuse me. So I had sent you um, the response from Lauren, mm -hmm. um, who's the head of, or the managing director of KMP. It just, it really looks to me that if we take out everything that isn't covered um, by the um, proposed retainer, we would lose money. And that is better for us to um, continue, continue the way we hourly are. and you know, pray for no litigations, well, basically. Yeah, these are all expensive things that wouldn't be included, and these are what we're spending money on now, um, a lot of these issues. Yeah. Basically, no, I, I agree. I think once we get the litigations behind us that we're in, um, it makes sense to continue the way we are, at least for another year, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see how that shakes out. All right. So, um, I wonder if we could put something in our contract that um, we're not going to tie in to, or that gives us the ability to look at um, the option of a retainer within the life of the contracts, I think this will be, what, three years, rather than committing to, you know, what we're doing now to possibly, if some of these issues, we're able to get them resolved and our legal expenses um, start to become more manageable, that um, we have the ability to look at um, a retainer, you know, switching from what we're doing now. That would, that would assume that our hourly billing would go over $36,000 a year. That, okay, that would. So if we're able to get it down for down to twenty thousand or something, then we wouldn't want to. Right, be a right, because then we'd be paying more for the yeah. retainer. Yeah, you're right. Do, do we have to sign a three-year contract? I mean, can we make it for a shorter period while um, we kind of evaluate this? Truthfully, it's been so long since I looked at this, I don't remember. There's probably a provision in there where we could, with 30 days notice, let them know that we're going to put it out to bid or something like that, but that might be something that we need to yeah. check out again. All right, so I'll, I'll ask if we can review the contract annually. Do you want to do that? That would be good. Oh, so that was to Lauren. 
and then basically for this year we will stay with the hourly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess a motion to authorize me to um, go ahead with Lauren with this information. I move these the questions. motion. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. All right. <coughs> you are going to work on the um, goals and priorities task spreadsheet. Um, yeah. I know Bree was having some trouble getting it on her computer. I, I haven't done a lot since okay. the last meeting. I've been. I had asked her to things. send it to me, yeah. and she. Yeah. I'll have something for the next meeting. Okay, so we'll move that to twelve nineteen. Okay, um, we will not be discussing the gravel permit. <coughs> um, we had some questions about the conditions, and um, so that conversation is still going on. We. Yeah, we do need a discussion. I've had two people complained about the jake breaks. Yes, that's, um, so thank you for mentioning that. And I don't know, the person I spoke to um, didn't really know where those trucks were going. And well, he's going to, he was going to pursue that. And follow a resident on Ring Road called me and said. Me too. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> me too. But, yeah. But, but he, when I followed up, he said, well, he, he couldn't say for sure that where they were going. Yeah, I think we need a discussion with uh, Mr. Mulcahy. On Jake. Right. On Jake period. period. Yeah. Um, so shall we ask him to come in on the 19th? That'd be good. Sure. Um, I'm going to look at the agenda and see how full it is because we do have a presentation that night um, by Dave Debai, who's got a contract with the Department of Transportation and it's yeah. for rural roads. And we have an appointment with Tara that night to talk about the records access officer. You could probably and push Jim off. So we'll we'll either do it that on the nineteenth yeah, or if I don't it's think too it'll full. Take long, okay. Really, I mean, Jim has a little hot burn, but we'll see where he's at. So I will ask him if he can come on the nineteenth or yeah. or push it off to our mm -hmm. next meeting. Jake breaks. Okay. Okay. The bylaw review committee. Um, you had written a Did letter to, to potential uh, members. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, I two things. I put together a, just that. Little, I think you saw. It. Yeah, yeah, I saw. It, yeah. I just think we need to get something out to the participants so they're not just hanging. Yes, I think that's yeah. good. That I think you probably idea. should yeah. come good letter. to yourself. Okay. So. Um. I'm not, don't worry about, you can change it around any way you want. I have no problem with that. Um, I'll take care of it. Yeah, okay. good so idea, really good idea. This and then Zach said he would, after we get everybody appointed. Yeah. He said that uh, he's busy around the, the, the group. He's busy right around the first of the year, but late January, early February, they'd be willing to come in and Perfect. talk to us. Now the question is, do we want to hold the bylaw setting it up the committee on how we're going to approach it till he comes in or do we want i kind of like to get started but i'm not sure what if we understand why we're going to have one committee two committees how we're going to approach this i think with 10 people and two sets of bylaws i think two committees make sense ken mm -hmm. i'm sorry who is this individual zach uh, blake is um chief of the technical assistant department within the department of revenue and they, uh, they have no charge. They go out to the towns and work with the towns on a whole array of different issues. And uh, when we approached them around zoning bylaws and municipal bylaws, they said that's something that they would do and have done in the past. Great. So they would come in and give us a presentation on what other towns have looked at and some ideas on how other towns have gone forward with that process. Okay. Pardon? Sure. He's got a follow-up. Yes. Is, has the 10 been announced or fixed, or are you talking about it, or what it is? Or? Uh, we have nine. I'm not sure who was the 10th. <laughs> oh, got an update. I guess I'm still thinking about um, my neighbor, whether or not she's answered. Yeah, I think we had nine. Oh, yeah. Well, do I get a third question? Yes. <laughs> I volunteered twice from the audience, and I don't know if... 
that was recognized or noted. In the I thought oh, you it, were on the list. Yes, You're your name's on the on list. The list. Yeah. <laughs> Twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one more? Yeah. Um, I think I mentioned it to John. We're all learning some lessons around um, these appeals that are going on. And after not having an appeal for a year and a half, we got two in one week. Yeah. So we're going to be a little busy with mm -hmm. a lot, but the point is we're learning that some of our documents are incredibly out of date. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. If you go to the website and you go to uh, your boards and committees and then you go over and I think it's land use boards and then you go to the EVA and then you go to the right is the EVA. There's two documents and one is called the Rules and Regulations. Um, for the ZBA, which is very interesting because uh, it's a 14 page document that was written in 2004, the year before September <coughs> 0. And 12 and a half pages of the document are about 40B. And the other page and a half that are there have nothing about the normal process for ZBA, including the dates, mm -hmm. the days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and for a decision, you know, to respond, have a hearing, make a decision, basic stuff. And I'm, I'll, I'll say I'm one that hadn't really ever read that because what's interesting is the 30 versus 60 days were yeah. under Ann's Subolesky's tutelage. We treated everything in 30 days. We didn't wait to 65 days. We, we had them posted and hearing within 30 days just as a matter of fact so uh, we just ran it like they were a 30-day turnaround and that's that's not bad You're mm -hmm. halfway on schedule anyway i would like to submit um, a uh, straw straw dog <laughs> straw man i don't know what it is for uh, a look by some folks which is the lessons we're learning around things like let's use zoning tables and timetables and notification. What I heard tonight was is a big, what did you know or who did you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who, who could have told you, should have told you, didn't tell you, and when did, when did you find out about it? And I'm reading this like I'm a total novice, which I'm not an expert yet. And um, we could put some new data in both Maybe not the bylaws, but the rules and regs that the bylaws implemented that haven't been looked at for six for 12 years. In this case, the lessons we're learning out of these last two appeals are just not published information. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking for stuff to fix, either on the website or and or in the zoning, um, which badly needs an index, you know, grab the, the bylaws and try to find fencing real fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Good luck. You know, it's just hard to stop mm -hmm. It's just amazing. And I think, I guess my point is if, if groups are looking for things to look at and examine, and I would throw this one up as currently and in the future a major um, set of issues that need uh, clarification, definition, schedules, and, and rewriting to incorporate what we know in 10 different places, but it's not on the website and it may not be in the, in the zoning. We have enough time to get it into the March cycle to change some. So unless you have 10 other items in mind for looking at, and I, and I, I know Bob Carling has said he's, he's got some things he'd like session committee to look at. I think there's a couple of issues that drop out of this. One is I think all the boards should take responsibility for their website. Okay, if, if things are out of date on there, we've talked about having one person in each board be a technology, not technology, but the website coordinator, for lack of a better word. The second piece is uh, I think the first meeting of this bylaw committee should maybe be to be kind of a sounding board for all the things that are problems and let the these 10 people that we'll have start to think through how they want to address the process. Do they want to do it board by board with the bylaws in it? 
we certainly can give them some direction around all the problems we've had with litigation, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And maybe use that first meeting to kind of flush out what's you know, really important, then the secondary importance, and sort of mm -hmm. make a the, um, timeline of how we want to go after this. So maybe we um, ask for the kickoff meeting in early January, That's follow up with the DOR meeting. Yes, yes. And, and that way we could use the DOR as a test against what our thinking is mm -hmm. and see if they agree. We'll see. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of smart people in that tent, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've got a really good group. And it would be nice to have the other boards have the ability to come in and and communicate what has been problematic for them so that we can address it. Because yeah. you can't fix it if you don't know about it. Exactly. And I would just uh, reiterate that we have a one-year cycle or an annual cycle that comes up in a couple of months where if it isn't written by March or yeah. That's whatever the or weren't, um, you know. It, It'll have to wait till next year. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, speak now or hold your peace. Yeah, so there is some sense of urgency. What right. are the five worst of contests? What are the five worst bylaws? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a small window because the about the uh, the warrant closes the third week in uh, March. March. Yeah. Realistically, so there's a small you'd be hard pressed to do anything. Well, you year. could do right. some of this stuff on the special town meeting warrant because it's sure. it's not inappropriate. So that and that gives you. Yeah, as long as it's within the annual. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Good advice. Okay, um, John. Do you have anything on the technology? Yeah, only that uh, I wrote a uh, a letter to uh, Michael Rodriguez. Just mm -hmm. asking him to give us some thoughts. Um, yeah, I saw. yeah, I saw that. That was good. Okay. Very yeah. good. That's so, good. And, so basically, uh, Mike is the guy who does our IT stuff, and yes. you're asking him yep. for some thoughts on yep. on what we need to do in the townhouse and um, to make an attractive grant. Right. Um, and I also wrote to uh, a resident that I know that has some technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm expertise to see if they could think of anything. Yeah, that's smart. You're putting together a package rather than just, um, you We're know, piecemeal. Get that money's up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll be looking to you, though, to talk about how we put this together. Sure, <laughs> definitely. Okay, public. Now, Chairman, can I just leave these with you? This is the, the document, the famous February document. Sure. And it's addressed to Mr. Melius, building inspector. And it says, for the reasons to follow, the de developer hereby requests reconsideration of your denial of a building permit. Mm -hmm. so Thank you, John. Okay, good. I'll, I'll email you. Thank you. Somebody say that? He said thank you. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why I left Public Safety Building Committee update on there, but we did meet this past Wednesday. Uh, we started looking over the um, site survey, but it was not really complete at this point. It should be complete by our next meeting. We um, Would you asked. Next meeting? Did I write it down? 1212. No, I didn't write it down. 1212. Okay. Oh, that is coming up. Never mind. <laughs> I did write it down. Um, and we did ask the um, Dunham and Sweeney to basically condense the police station a little bit more. We still felt it was still a little too large, and yet, you know, it's it's a it's a fine line because we not only have to serve the town now, but we're building a building. It needs to serve the town in 40, 50 years as well. And and do we cheap out now and leave something out that we're going to need? or is going to give us space that we can utilize in some other fashion in 30 years. So that's that's what we're asking. Yeah. That's what we're working on. I think 40, 50 years is way too far out there. I mean, there's going to be all sorts of things coming It'll be in. all virtual. It might be. Yeah, we'll just be installing cameras. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll get your ticket in the mail. Okay. <laughs> We have a um, appointment for Irv Butler. That's that's over there. We can okay. we can deal that with correspondence and just to let you know what I signed today. I think I have it here somewhere. I did. 
rats. All right, I signed the regular, oh, it's right in front of me. I signed the regular payroll stuff. There were no Board of Selectmen warrants to sign, um, probably because Bree is out sick today mm -hmm. and we hope Bree feels better. And I signed three Chapter 90 reimbursement requests uh, for engineering on the Winnetuxic Bridge for $4,450, which is a just a portion of a $23,000 um, amount. A purchase, um, equipment purchase, which was $2,199 for a vibratory roller, uh, which will be reimbursed in full. Um, $106,573.81 for a leveling course on a section of Main Street. And it looks like there's about 30, 33000 or so left on that um, project at 100% reimbursement. And also he put out a project request for $7,000 for a preliminary study of the Main Street Ring Road intersection. Okay, so that's all I signed today. Good. All righty. <coughs> um, um, I don't know if this is apropos, but the Mass Mutual Association coming up in January, mm -hmm. and we should be thinking about meeting and I assume the town pays for that beyond a warrant. Yeah. yeah, what is that, like 125 bucks, something like that? Uh, about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I got, you got all oh, got the... Uh, yes. Um, and I, probably we need more information, but the, some of the workshops really looked interesting. Mark, I know Mark Russo attended twice and he really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I, um, <laughs> I guess I sort of thought I had to pay for myself and that wasn't within my budget, so... Um, I don't know. Well, I think it's well. The I, town I paid don't know for if the, the mass mutual that we went yeah. to for the modernization mm -hmm. of the municipal laws. Mm -hmm. I guess it's something to consider. You have two more years. Maybe it'd be good for the town to pay for you to go and report back to us. Or mm -hmm. I don't know if you're interested in going or not. I'm not. I can't remember where the date is. Uh, but, uh, it's a Friday and Saturday, the 20 and 21st. Yeah. 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 I can't do Friday. So yeah, John, if you were interested. You might want to take a look though I'll and see if again. there's some workshops because mm -hmm. there's about at least a dozen work, maybe seven or eight on each day. So is 125 for per person or could one person go on Friday and one person go on Saturday? <coughs> I'm not sure. Okay. We'll be getting more information, yeah. I'm sure. Did you have a question, Ken? Ken? Um, the, inter the study of the intersection of Ring Road and Main Street is a grant. He is applying for it under um, Section 90. So it would be, I guess, if, if it's approved, then it will be reimbursed by the state. Oh, that's and I always wondered about that, what you can do there. But right now it's in the proposal form, so I guess we'll find out. Um, it's add the hairpin turn on Crescent Street. Yeah. You see the car that went into Kirstead's barn? Yeah. Yes. I'll, uh, I'll be the bumper. Yeah. <laughs> I hope there's a license plate on it. Yeah, there was. <laughs> there was. Good. It was. It ran it. And lady. So, yeah. Uh, I would actually almost personally think that that corner is a little worse. Um, I did ask Jim, and we really haven't had accidents at the corner on Main and Ring Road. Um, Boy, I'm surprised because people come there when they come bringing kids to school oh. and they're late for work. They come down Main Street from 106, take a left, and don't stop. Hardly slow down to go around that corner. And you've got people coming back the other way because they've dropped off their mm -hmm. children. Yeah, he said we've had some in the winter, but they've been pretty slow motion and just ended up in snow banks. And, but um, in all, all of his years, he can only remember one, which was actually, um, I think, some teenagers that flipped a car. And that was many, many years ago. Hmm. Well. So I think my son went off the one time. But it was I guess he was quiet about the car. It. <laughs> That was a long time ago. <laughs> so anyway, he's, he's looking into it, and perhaps the state will yeah. agree to that. <coughs> Dale, do you have um, anything yeah, on these things? Yeah, fact, um, here's the letter, uh, the board letter to Senator Brady for the Silver Lake. Um, it's essentially the same thing that uh, Halifax had sent along. And... Uh, 
scan it and sign it, I'll okay. get it out to him. Mr. We already sent the letter to Kingston. Yeah. So this Fine. is to yep. Brady. So a motion that we um, sign this. I make a motion that we sign the letter dated December 5th to Senator Brady regarding Civil Lake Regional School District to uh, right to convey a certain parcel of land. And a second? Second. Second. All in favor. You can't, second. you can't first and second. Right. Um, all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so we'll sign this. And this letter is asking them to um, actually, it's I think Silver Lake Regional School, or is it Kingston, to um, amend the legislation. What do you mean? Is it, or is it Town of Kingston? I think this is town just a letter. This is asking the senator to either to postpone it or to amend the legislation to allow the and vote of the uh, community but can they amend it or do does the person that requested the legislation have to amend it that would be up to the senator to f feedback I mean I don't okay. believe they could they can amend it I'm sure on anybody's request but they would probably kick it back and and, and have the you know and have the uh, the proponents yeah I'm not it. sure what the process is whether they can yeah, just amend that, it I think that's kind of it they could amend it I mean, okay themselves. I mean, legally, but but they probably wouldn't in this case where it's a home rule. They would okay. probably kick it back and say, you know, we, you you have at least two towns, maybe the three towns are voting on this, are, are stating the same thing, so you should offer some amendment language, and then they would send it back up again. Hopefully, they would send it around to the three boards okay. of selectmen first, so they approve it, and then and then mm -hmm. send it okay. back up again. Yeah, we don't actually know. We know that some of Kingston's board wants this change. We don't know if they all do. They right. have a five-member board. Yeah, Halifax is unanimous on it. Right. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. And we just think that we should. Um, uh, the town of uh, or the towns of Plimpton and Halifax should have the ability to um, to vote for this at town meeting. And right now, the legislation has um, not given us that um, that ability, and we're asking it to be amended. Okay. And this is, uh, I believe, I brought that up last week. This is that's an anonymous donor, by the way, so don't mention any oh, the names. Library. The woman who's donated to our library, she's done it every year since I've been here, and probably before that. And um, she makes a generous donation every year to Dennett Library, thousand dollars this year. Um, and uh, so thank you, Larry, for her and for tax yeah, The Plimpton Public, not the, the Dennett. I'm sorry, the Plimpton Public Library, right? No, very nice. That's awfully yeah. generous. I mean, and that's, you know, it goes a long it, way. It, during my there. tenure, that's been nearly $7,000, $6,000. So, I mean, that's a lot of, that's it's very generous. Nice. Very generous. All righty. Thank you for writing the One of the, the things, uh, I'm going to give a shout out here to the Plimpton Public Library. They now have Hoopla. Mm -hmm. You can download movies. Oh, really? Yeah, and you get six or seven a month, and they're free. And then they send so through your and, library and cards? books through and music and wow. books, okay. music. Okay. So I tried it. I downloaded um, a movie on my computer, hitched it up with an HDMI cable to my TV, and watched it. Jeez. That would be a nice little cable program, right? So I'm um, talking about the library and all the different things that they now offer. Yes, in fact. Um, can I change the Yes, go ahead. I went to the open house for Area 58. Mm -hmm. uh, it's impressive. But uh, they have an area where we could do things like that, you know, do tapings, mm -hmm. um, et cetera. So I would encourage you to go see it. Mm -hmm. And then maybe sometime we talk about how do we utilize it since it's there and we're paying for mm -hmm. part of it. But, uh, it's it's pretty neat. Neat. Okay, Dale. Uh, the the next uh, the next item I have is uh, in terms of doing a, a salary compensation um, study. I did contact DOR, Zach Blake, as a matter of fact, and he got back to me and he said they'd love to help us, but right now they're working through a lot of the community compact stuff. And he said uh, if we would like to. Uh, he'll put us on the waiting list. It would probably be sometime in the spring, or the alternative would be to contact UMass or um, a uh, company called Community Paradigm. Obviously, those would cost money, so right. that's why I, I'm asking you, do you want me to pursue it with with the Collins Center or um, with, um, I guess the man's name is Bernie Lynch at this other company, and so just to see what they're, what it will cost? to uh, get a compensation study, or do you want me to have him put us on DOR's list for uh, later in the year? 
but he says late spring, so I'm assuming that wouldn't happen. It doesn't hurt to find out how much it costs. But yeah, we could ask. But I, I think. How about both? <laughs> Put us on the waiting list and find out how much it'll yeah. cost. <laughs> but I, I can't suspend. Yeah, list. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I will do. I will do. Yeah. Uh, both we're, of those we're not rolling in dough, so I get a number. I don't know how much. Absolutely, I think late spring is probably pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? And uh, the other, I do not have an email server update tonight. And finally, I did get the information from Mayflower, which has been forwarded out. Um, and I'm going back and forth a little bit with Maya now on some of the additional information they need to flesh it out, but we should be able to get a quote from them fairly soon on, uh, on that. Would, would you just make sure you also touch base with that fellow I gave you his name? Oh, I will, yeah, <coughs> yeah I will, yep, definitely. And there is a um, Mayflower board meeting on Thursday, which I will be attending. Yeah, they're voting on, they're voting. They're voting on dropping some of the premium insurance yeah. packages, which um, I don't know. I'll get more information then and yeah. find out. Alrighty, that's it, Dale? Yes, that's it. Okay, correspondence? The uh, first one is Town of Plimpton request for services of legal counsel. This is from the town accountant <coughs> and a personnel issue regarding vacation time. Okay, motion to allow the accountant an hour with town council. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Motion? Uh, motion to allow the accountant town an hour with town council um, regarding a personnel vacation issue. Thank you. Um, do we read this? I'm not sure what this is. Okay. Um, this is a, an employee change notice. Last last meeting we voted to um, accept Christian Oberg as a full-time police officer and he uh, had been a special officer, so this is just a change of his employment form. And oh, okay. So, uh, okay. Else. motion that we allow me to sign this. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The last one is uh, touring our butler, the Board of Selectmen of Plimpton, by virtue of the authority in us vested by the laws of the Commonwealth to hereby appoint you as to the Community Preservation Committee to fulfill an unfilled position from uh, November 29, 16 until June 30th, 2019. Okay, um, just a reminder, last week we accepted Right. Ms. Anderson's um, resignation from that board as our appointee, and Mr. Butler is interested in serving as our appointee, and we agreed to that. So, uh, motion to sign the appointment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay, that takes care of correspondence. Mm -hmm. Our have, next uh, meeting, yes, go the ahead. Executive session minutes. I'd like to. Oh, uh, we should have done through. those. Okay, we. I had no changes. Did you I have anything? no changes. So, motion to accept them as written. So, second. And <coughs> aye. And I, no, we're not in executive session, so we don't have to roll we call. We don't have vote. to roll call. No, it's just fun. <laughs> Thank you. Get those done. That was a board of selectmen joke. <laughs> Okay, our next meeting, we're a little off schedule, you may have noticed. Um, our next meeting is December 19th. After that, it will be January 9th. And then the 23rd, because there's a holiday in there. So, um, Can you add to the next agenda um, negotiations, both Silver Lake and um, Dennett? I had my first Dennett. Um, 
contract negotiations with the teachers, that meeting is tomorrow, and I had one last week. I mean, basically all I'm going to say is yes, we're, we're negotiating. Oh, so that's 12 19, you want it? Yes, 12 19, please. Okay. I probably won't have any updates, <coughs> but just in case. Okay. Anything else? No? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, and thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>